To all North Pole City Elves, those in Santa's Village, in the lower 48, and all around the world, this is your weekly update. I am your host, Walter Mistletoe Livingstone. Let's go to press. For the week of February 14th, 2022, your sponsor is Orville's Origami Supplies, located at 1935 Snowball Run Road. For those looking for something different, stop by and check out all of the paper selections available. That's Orville's Origami Supplies. Update from Santa's Village. Tragedy hit Santa's workshop last week as a bad batch of glue was the cause of thousands of dollhouses falling apart after assembly. All the dollhouses had to be scrapped and rebuilt after a new shipment of glue arrived. This put the warehouse way behind and they will have to figure out how to catch up and get ahead on orders again this coming week. When reaching out to workshop supervisor Latimer Snurd for a comment, he did not want to speak with us at this time. It is still not known what the issue was with the batch of glue, however we did hear a rumor that it could have been done intentionally. Further investigation will follow. From the Department of Elfland Security, the Office of History and Research has officially released a biography for Cupid. It took a little trick to get him to come to the office to get this completed, however it has been released and it is on his webpage. Also, coming soon is a story on how Santa and Cupid met, so keep your eyes open for that as well. Besides keeping up with the post on the website for Cupid, the department of WWWPR is getting ready for the release of Lucky the Leprechaun's website. This should be available soon and ready for his arrival at Santa's Village. North Pole City weather update. Temperatures are going to start falling again as we get to the end of the week. There is no snow in the forecast, but expect nights to be very frigid and cold. Make sure you stock up on your heating supplies and add those extra blankets to your beds. This week in elf history, on February 15, 1903, the first teddy bear went on sale in a candy store in Brooklyn, New York. The store owner and inventor, Morris Mitchum, places two stuffed animals in his shop window advertising them as teddy bears. Mitchum had earlier petitioned President Theodore Roosevelt for permission to use his nickname, Teddy. The president agreed, and before long, other toy manufacturers began turning out copies of Mitchum's stuffed bears, which soon became a national childhood institution. The idea for the bear came from a cartoon Mitchum saw depicting Roosevelt refusing to kill a captured bear that was tied up to a tree. Through this inspiration, Mitchum created a tiny, soft bear cub and put it in his candy shop window with a sign that said, Teddy's Bear. After sending a bear to Roosevelt and receiving permission to use his name, he began to produce them commercially to great demand. The toys were an immediate success and Mitchum founded the Ideal Novelty Toy Company. Since the creation of the first teddy bears, which sought to imitate the form of real bear cubs called Teddies, they have greatly varied in form, style, color, and material. They have become collector's items with older and rarer teddies appearing in public auctions. Teddy bears are among the most popular gifts for children and are often given to adults to signify affection, congratulations, or sympathy. The North Pole City Council has asked for a complete updated map of North Pole City in Santa's Village to be the main focus of the city engineers due to the project's plan for this spring. A roll-up plan needs to be put in place to not disrupt transportation throughout the entire city. Santa has asked council to leave Santa's village streets and sidewalks replacement until late to mid-summer if possible as this is some of the slower times in the workshops. City engineers have started working on the map and it should be available for council's meeting later this month. The finals for the snowball games are set for Saturday. The two teams going to the finals were the top two scoring teams from the semifinals. They are Love at First Snowflake coming in with 79 points and the Peppermint Shack in a very close second place with 78 points. The competition this past week was a real nail biter getting down to each event being a game changer. After each member's participation you could hear cheers from the different taverns throughout town. The excitement of the games were everywhere. 
Both teams will go head-to-head -head next Saturday, center stage at Town Hall City Center Auditorium, with both teams competing in all 15 events. The competition will begin promptly at 10 a.m. and will be broadcasted throughout North Pole City for those who cannot make the event live due to their work schedule. Frosty will be hosting a gathering at his new property on Wednesday for anyone wishing to come out and help make some ice bricks for his new castle. He has worked with the engineers within North Pole City and Santa's Village and came up with the final plans and designs, although it keeps changing, for his new ice castle. It is expected that he will need thousands of ice blocks for the foundation and a special machine has been developed to help in making these. He plans on starting in the morning so stop on out. WELF MPC would like to wish everyone out there a very happy Valentine's Day. And we hope that you get to spend some time with your loved ones. This is Walter Mistletoe Livingstone with a reminder. If you want your children to listen, try talking softly to somebody else. Have a good evening and be sure to tune in next week for another WELF MPC North Pole Radio News Update.